Hello, everybody. I'm Alex. I'm here joined with Shoham uh, Dasgupta. He is a cloud solution architect, and he wrote a recent blog post for the Semantic Kernel featuring how to build Semantic Kernel applications using Java. Java is a recent addition, the most recent addition to the languages supported for the Semantic Kernel, and it's a very important language, especially for enterprise type customers. So uh, Shoham, do you want to maybe just quickly introduce yourself, give a little background, and we can talk about Java and Semantic Kernel. Sure, Alex, uh, thanks a lot. My name is Shoham. Um, originally from India, living in Netherlands for quite a while now. Microsoft, I started pretty recently, February. Um, I've been active in tech for a long time, almost 17 years, consulting, tech lead, architect. Never really stopped coding, to be honest. Um, and uh, I love Java, so um, always uh, anything comes up new with Java, I like to get my hands dirty. And to be honest, semantic kernel fell in, I, I think tech, quite a lot of check boxes for me. First thing was definitely a Java SDK. Secondly, it's an open source product from Microsoft, and it has something to do with um, open AI uh, that we all are actually subconsciously and consciously talking and doing something about. Um, and yeah, this this SDK gives a lot of opportunity for, for everybody, the enterprise clients or um, a normal developer as well, to play around with uh, OpenAI. Well, without further ado, do we want to give off a little preview or a little, little demo of what Java and Semantic Kernel looks like? Yeah, definitely. In the blog, I actually uh, wrote six examples, different varieties of it, inline functioning, how to use prompts as text, how to use prompts as a plugin, uh, how to pipeline uh, different prompts, but the one that I actually liked very much, and uh, to be honest, currently also busy with a couple of our partners to actually explore that area, is combining uh, semantic kernel, open AI with cognitive search or a vector search around it. So you query something, a vector database, and you get a vectorized results back. And how you use that in combination with different prompts uh, with OpenAI. So one of the example that I wrote was um, is combining cog cognitive search, Azure cognitive search. So for example, if you index a bunch of PDFs or a bunch of text or a bunch of documents um, in cognitive search, and for example, you are you want to actually find out a certain search text appears in which all documents, uh, and maybe extract those results and summarize to the user when they ask it. Pretty close to a real life use case. So first of all, um, if you see uh, in the code, um, I try to create a kernel. So every uh, semantic kernel code begins with creating a kernel. And um, the kernel here is a very specific kernel that I create is a kernel with embedding. Uh, uh, this, this specific kernel, so we have a generative AI enabled uh, kernel and an embedding enabled kernel. An embedding enabled kernel is normally used for uh, search on indexes and create those vector databases. So the first thing we uh, I do in, in, in the code is to really find out um, the um, search results from um, with this kernel from cognitive search. So that's what the highlighted uh, method call actually does. And when it gets back the results, I try to uh, create a relevant memory. Um, so what is the relevant memory? So that's basically the bunch of text or the results that came back from the search. And I put it as a text format and supply them as an extra context to uh, Azure OpenAI. Uh, and then comes the second kernel, which is a non-embedded, a normal one. And there I in, uh, invoke a uh, summarization skill to um, passing on the relevant memory to summarize the uh, results that I get back. And if you run this, you get a, a results back. So in this example, I'm using uh, a memory of uh, URLs. Let me uh, try to open that. 
I think it is somewhere. So I, uh, I have a small um, map of a, um, um, a documents which has a URL and which has a description on it. So basically these are the com uh, collection of URLs from semantic kernel uh, documentation. Um, and, and the description says, what is this page about? And uh, what I search is basically, um, can you tell me what is a prompt engineering? Uh, and the and this whole example will try to find out which URLs and which description actually answer this kind of question and try to summarize it at the end. Um, and I hope that runs and gives me a results back. Um, if you follow the GitHub, you'll also know you need to uh, actually uh, give a few configuration parameters when you're running these. So it needs where your OpenAI endpoint is, what is the key, and it also uses an extra uh, configuration about where the Azure Cognitive Search endpoint is and what the key for that is. And as you see, it found two articles basically um, uh, here. This is the, basically the memory that I, uh, Cognitive Search returned to me. Um, these two URLs basically with this description gives me what prompt engineering actually is. And at the end, it actually uses a um, summarizer to summarize what it gets back from those URLs. So um, basically it also shows how you chain two different uh, skills together or prompts together, sorry, plugins together um, and, and, and create basically a AI pipeline for yourself, all in Java using semantic kernel. Yeah, I really like this example. It illustrates several of the key points or key uh, properties of the semantic kernel, right? About uh, the importance of memory, the and tying uh, the retrieval aspect of you know fetching from a memory store uh, like Azure Cognitive Search and uh, getting that um, you know vectorized result back and uh, that using that memory as a as a context. Uh, for your skills, for your plugins, right? Your semantic functions uh, down the line. So it's a very powerful pattern and you know, it's glad to see, or I'm glad to see that it's now uh, expressed in Java. Um, in terms of, so I think this is a very good demo. Uh, in terms of the sort of things that you would like, personally like to see more of, um, what, what sort of features, what sort of uh, things should the Java semantic kernel focus on? Um, I would very much like to see um, uh, easy integration with different frameworks. Uh, first of all, like um, uh, like I am a big uh, fan of uh, a Spring Boot, um, or and, and it's a very annotation driven. So maybe um, annotation driven updates in um, semantic kernel would be nice. I know the plugins are like that, um, but uh, initializing a kernel, uh, make it a make it a singleton or uh, a bean type, um, so that makes it easy to you know manage the life cycle of these objects better. Secondly, I would love to see uh, using different uh, models. Uh, to be honest, um, if uh, I can uh, use Hugging Face or uh, I can use Llama or something else, so then it will become truly open source, I guess when we also give us a choice to the developer or the users to yeah you know pick and choose what they want to do with it yeah yeah that area in particular is one that i'm personally interested in uh, i know for hugging face support in particular right again that's one of those things that python has a more natural integration with uh due to the you know transformer library uh being very easily pip installed but you know, for C Sharp and Java, that's a little more difficult to to come by. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm all in favor of of seeing that more more naturally expressed. Um, hopefully, it comes in soon. Can you talk about the importance of Java in the overall ecosystem for especially for enterprises and where that sort of fits in? Well, Java is one of the biggest language that being used uh, all over the world. Um, I, I think if we go on statistics, um, uh, it runs almost all sorts of workflow throughout the world. 
it's been there for the last 25 plus years and um uh, you know i've been in the in the java world since 1.5 and right now uh, we are very close to releasing jdk 21 this whole journey is um, super impressive and a few years back when java decided to uh, bring releases every uh, 6 months every 3 months actually and then um, it became that the, the ecosystem grew around it. Um, and yeah, um, I all, was always interested in doing something with AI and, and Java never really had that much of option, to be honest, to do with it in compared to Python. And um, yeah, this was chance. Yeah, yeah, that, that very much is a similar sentiment in the C Sharp community as well. And I'm not surprised that Java also would resonate with this, especially in this current time with AI being very hot, very exciting. But uh, you know, most of that has been expressed in the Python side of the the world. But you know, it's great to see you know more efforts like with the semantic kernel to give the the big Java community right a lot of uh, attention that it probably deserves. My current role, we work with a lot of ISVs, uh, scale-ups and startups within Netherlands, and some of them are a uh, pure Java shop. Uh, and to be honest, if if they are excited about OpenAI and they want to do something with uh, Azure OpenAI, this actually adds a very much easy step for them to, uh, you know, um, integrate it to, with their existing system and use it easily. So you don't need to upscale or find skills around to do this. Well, cool. Thank you, Shoham, for, for this walkthrough. Uh, as a way to sort of like wrap up, for the listeners who want to follow you know, what you're doing or you know, just follow along with, with you, where can they find you? Yeah, they can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, pretty easy to search. Shoham Dasgupta, there are quite a lot, but I think um, uh, the one only one works at Microsoft in Netherlands. Um, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is I am Shoham. So basically, I am Shoham together. Yeah, just give me a ping if you're interested to talk about uh, AI or um, Java in general or any um, cloud native applications in general. Sounds good. Yes, make sure to follow him, connect with him, ask him all your enterprise Java uh, cloud needs. So, all right. Well, thank you again, Shoham. And We'll wrap up.